<laughs> Welcome back to Bay Sunday, everybody. When you think about that uh, dream European vacation, Italy, France, maybe Greece come to mind. How about Romania, Bulgaria, Poland? Maybe not. Eastern Europe has a lot to offer, too. And our next guest loved it so much, he wrote a book called The Hidden Europe, What Eastern Europeans Can Teach Us. The author is also a Harvard business grad, founder of a Silicon Valley high-tech firm, but apparently likes to travel maybe a little bit. Pleased to have Francis. <laughs> Uh, tap on with us this morning. How are you? Great, Frank. We shared a little walk, a little coffee, mm -hmm. and I asked you this question. Do you have a home? <laughs> You're always well, traveling. I, I consider home San Francisco because I was born and raised here. My mom lives here, and so that's why I, 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 I feel it's my home. But uh, yeah, home is in my backpack. Now, your dad is from France. Your mom was, is from Chile. That's right. So you kind of had this bug in planet to that's be right. kind of global, right? That's you, right. You had to travel. Yeah. So you, uh, in, in 2004, you went from, well, I guess, Finland down to the Black Sea, loved it, went back in 08, and then spent another, what, three, three years there, right? Three years, that's right. And, uh, and you wrote this book. Was the intention to go back and write the book, or did that just kind of happen? No, I knew I had already started the writing the book after my first visit in 2004, and so I spent five months in 25 countries, and then I decided to go back there and then get reacquainted with the region and then finish off the book. Now, you're not staying at the, uh, you know... Five-star hotels, the Ritz, that kind of thing. You do some couch surfing. That's right. You are one with the people, right? That's right. And yeah. that's what it's all about. Yeah, I mean, I think that some of the richest travel experiences are the ones when you get to meet the locals, stay with the locals, and see how they live, and, and you get to see multiple generations of the family. And you're an easy guy to get to know because I'm walking down Battery <laughs> Street, and uh, we bump into each other. They go, Frank, I'm going to talk to you about my book in about a half an hour. We went out and had coffee and caught up, and uh, you can't be a shy guy no, if absolutely. you're going to do this, that's right? That's right. Yeah, so I'm, usually when I go on a train or a bus or something like that, I look to the person right next to me, and I say, Start talking to them and just say, hey, do you speak English? And, and then all of a sudden, just strike up a conversation. So many countries. You've been at, what, 75, I guess? That's right. Oh. And how many did you go on this journey to write this book? 25. 25. Yeah. Favorite country, and tell us why. Montenegro. Yeah. Uh, Montenegro is great because it just has everything. It's the size of Connecticut, and yet it has the, the southernmost fjords in Europe. It has the, the Adriatic Sea right there. It also has these old towns, these old Venetian towns, as well as the snow-capped mountains. Uh, uh, it's just amazing. And, ha and how much it offers in just small area. And the food, you particularly like food Yeah, the there, food right? is also great. I mean, it has a strong Italian influence. So then you'll have gelato, you'll have pizza, you'll have pasta, you'll have this fresh fish. Uh, so it's a, it's a nice, light, uh, heavy on the vegetables as well. So it's delicious all along the Adriatic Sea. Best glass of wine you had? I don't drink alcohol. Okay. <laughs> Where was that in the book? <laughs> what was your biggest surprise? What surprised you the most? You um, so I guess... The things that surprised me the most is that that places were a lot safer than you ever expected. I mean, yeah. I was going in Kosovo, I was in Moldova, and, and places that you would think that are maybe a little bit dangerous, and, and it was totally safe everywhere I, I, I went to. And so I think sometimes we have this kind of horrendous visions when we go travel to places that have these strange names. Yeah, especially Eastern Europe, because there's kind of a mystery behind these countries. That's right, you know? yeah. It's not like everyone travels there, you're going to Bulgaria? What the hell? What are you That's doing right. there for? That's right, exactly. Know? That's um, right, and, 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 and so a lot of this is we have these, because we don't know much about Eastern Europe, even though the wall came down almost 25 years ago, it, uh, it's still a, a kind of a big mystery. It's still hidden. Yeah, and what's next? You're going to Africa now, yes. right? Yes, I'm going to be visiting all 54 countries in Africa. I'll be starting in Cairo on uh, February 3rd of uh, 2013, and I'll be spending three years traveling all 54 countries of Africa. And when you say three years, you're not coming back. That's you, right. You pack and you fly. That's right. Backpack, see you later, goodbye. Yeah, and I try, uh, I hit the ground and I stay on the ground the whole time. I try not to uh, avoid airplanes at all costs and just travel overland in all the countries well, of if Africa. If you are traveling, the hidden Europe is, you got to have this in your backpack, right? Yes, although it is a little heavy. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. She's got more information. Francis, thanks so much. <laughs> Thank we you so much, it. Frank. If you'd like more information on the hidden Europe and more, log on to F. Uh, tapon.com. That's it for us this week. Another edition of Bay Sunday coming up next week. We're going to leave you with the sweet sounds of Mads Tolling. A little more violin before we uh, say goodbye. And a big shout out to our intern, Mick, who is uh, leaving us to go back to college. Great job, Mick. And uh, have a great holiday, everybody. Mm -hmm.